Nirvana were contracted to appear on a BBC TV show to perform Pentecost Hotel, our newest single, which was getting massive airplay, especially on John Peel's programme. The show was being produced at the BBC West Hampstead studio, and it was to be a challenging experience for us. We would have to record the complete song all over again in six hours to master quality for broadcast a few days later. I did a guide vocal for everybody in their headphones, and when the backing track was acceptable, the take that the in-house engineers, not us, decided on was overdubbed with a new vocal and harmony. In other words, it would be a complete new recording as close as possible to the original. BBC quality control, they called it in those days. It was while we were between takes that the Jimi Hendrix experiences appeared in the studio. First Noel, then Mitch, and then the maestro. They were on to promote Hey Joe. As they walked across the room in single file, Jimmy stopped, stood for a minute or two, came back towards the centre and sat cross-legged on the floor opposite us, captivated by the sound Sylvia was making. He stayed there for the next 10 minutes, listening to us do tapes at Pentecost Hotel. At one point, he moved his chair to be in a better position to see how Sylvia was playing his cello. He was like a kid looking at a new guitar in a shop window. When Sylvia played, she was like Jimmy, stroking and caressing, plucking and attacking those four strings. Jimmy sat there entranced. At one point, we stopped, and Sylvia called me over from the microphone and asked quietly, why is that man staring at me like that? Who is he? I said, that's Jimi Hendrix. His name meant nothing to her. She was a complete stranger in our world of pop and rock. When he was leaving, as we had finished another take, he came over and said, good luck with the song, fellas. Then he turned towards Sylvia. Excuse me, ma'am. I just want to say I love what you do. His charm was effortless. If you could bottle it, it would have made you a fortune. About a month later, I encountered Jimmy again, this time in the Bag of Nails pub, where I was meeting Viv Prince, the drummer of the Pretty Things. <coughs> Jimmy was sitting at the bar with Chaz Chandler, who had been the bass player of the Animals, but was now managing the experience. Jimmy remembered me, but got the name of our group wrong. He thought we were called Nevada. He told me that he had never seen a cello before that day. He liked the sound of our band because it was original. You know, man, playing that cello it was like making love, those deep tones and colours. That cello between her legs, man, it made me happy. The last song that Jimmy wrote was the story of life. The story of life is quicker than the wink of an eye. The story of love is hello and goodbye. Until we meet again. And that's it. In, in this book, uh, I came up with this little idea of, at the end of every chapter, I put in a thing called Indulgent Recommendation for the iPod Generation. So, I say here, like, if you're reading this book, I'm sure you already know the main album is Jimi Hendrix and the Experience. So I would recommend something a little more obscure. And I've written here, Jimi plays Monterey, Shake with Otis Redding, Criterion DVD, recorded in 1967. Bo Diddley. Bo Diddley is a gun singer. Chess, 1963. One of his favourite albums. Otis Redding, Pain in My Heart, Acco, 1964. I'm sure there's quite a few people in here who know these tracks. And Don Covey, Mercy Mercy, which Jimmy played guitar on. Fantastic song. So there we go. Jimmy Hendricks.